none of this is a secret to anybody that lives in a bad place. Most of the stuff, if you grew up in the hood, if you grew up in a third world country, if you grew up in a place that has, you know, the people don't trust the police, a lot of people arm themselves. A lot of people create what they need. They don't have Amazon Prime. They don't have uh, the ability to go to a knife store. They have what they have, the kitchen knife, uh, the plastic bottle, the, the electrical tape. Um, if I wanted to start somebody on the path of being self-reliant and self-proficient, you know, what better than to have them be able to create a weapon and arm themselves anywhere they are with anything. Uh, if you can be anything at a base level, specifically if you, if you want to take yourself as a good guy, uh, criminality, people doing hood rat shit, some of these low means tactics, uh, it's not about emulating them. I'm not showing people how to carry around a kitchen knife with a plastic bottle sheath. But if one day you're in a place where you have no other options, you have options. There are specific things that you're teaching here, but what is your intention as an instructor as far as the broad stroke? Uh, my intention as an instructor as far as the broad stroke is to be disruptive. I wish I could tell you that, it's, that I have some sort of a plan to make people better or the world a peaceful place, but I want to be disruptive. In the, in the, uh, I'm, I'm an alarm call. I'm screaming at people to, to tell them that people are out there getting ready to do something to you. And if you're not able to recognize, to see what they're doing, to not emulate them, but to reflect their actions. I mean, if you want to train a good group of people to be counter ambushers, the best way you can do that is to teach them to be the best ambushers on the planet. And uh, I think as an instructor, I'm here to be that, that, that disruptive force and that voice to tell people that, you know, get ready conventionally, but pay attention to the unconventional. You know, a lot of us like the high speed stuff. A lot of us love the uh, tactical high speed people, the traditionally trained people, the clean cut people. But there are other people out there in the world that populate our prison systems, that populate the, uh, the, 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 the murder scenes. And a lot of the weapons you find there are not uh, tactical knives, kitchen knives. A lot of the people that are doing some of these things come from agricultural backgrounds, rural backgrounds, rural countries, but a lot of these people are, you know, products of experience. And again, I'm bringing some of those experiences to people that might have not experienced them themselves. And I'm trying to create a controlled experiences that take probably two, three years for somebody out there learning it on the streets. I can sit down into two days. A lot of the stuff that you're teaching is offensive in nature. What defensive value can, can you deliver to your yeah. students? Uh, recognition. Recognition. Uh, it is not offensive in nature to show somebody that roofies or hypnol gets utilized as a date rate drug or as a chemical restraint in human trafficking. I'm not teaching you that that is what you should use to be a human trafficker. I'm teaching you how to recognize how that's used, how to recognize how you might be able to counteract some of the effects of it or to identify the effects of it on yourself or somebody else. And basically I'm teaching you awareness. If you, there was a quote in the Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi, know your enemy, know his sword. And I think a lot of us are ignoring the knowing their sword part. Not that you should be teaching this stuff for free, but if you weren't getting paid to teach this stuff, what value does it still bring to you as a human being to share this knowledge? Uh, I did a lot of work in uh, Mexico and worked for a government that was not the best government on the planet. 
and where none of us are free of sin. I'm a man of faith. And I think uh, in a way, anybody that has any experiences, veterans, police officers, people that have gone through traumatic relationships, people that have been through abusive relationships, people that have gone through a horrible fucking experience in their lives. I think if you talk to all of them, they find redemption in sharing some of those experiences and using some of those experiences for positive good and transformation and change for others. It's hard to live with some of this information. It's hard to live with some of these experiences without actually doing anything with them. Some people use those experiences to turn into sociopathic criminals and figure out shit. Uh, some people use it to show other people how to not get into the same issues that they got into when they were coming up. Uh, I'm not an instructor. I'm a cautionary tale is what I tell people. And I'd rather people not fuck up in the ways I fucked up in my life. So this is what I do. If there's an element of what you do that is a kind of redemption from the things that you may have done in the past, does it worry you that sharing this information could perpetuate some of the bad things? I think uh, that question is the same, is, is that, that question is posed from the same mindset as somebody would post a sign that said, Guns, gun free zone or weapons free zone. It's a victim mentality. There's no dangerous information. There's only dangerous people that will use that information in a dangerous way. I can show you how to drive and somebody might drive through the Boston Marathon. You know? and it's intention. I think we're all grown ups. There are some bad people out there, sociopaths hide, you know, but creating a culture of ignorance and call it safety is a good way to go down a rabbit hole that will end up, uh, that'll end all of us up in a place like the UK right now. Uh, where stabbings are up, you know, and it's supposed to be a weapons free zone and, you know, it's basically a victim rich zone is what that is. You know, on a personal note, bro, I think there are a lot of people who may be trying to teach this material that shouldn't. Uh, I think you're the right person to teach it. Thank you. Thank you. to give you guys the gift and the opportunity of being able to do one of the most amazing things that humans can do, which is learn from all of this experience. So one more time, thank you so much. Thank you. Such an honor. Such an honor.